Hi everyone, my name is Hawa Drame, and today I'll be presenting the research paper Black is the Criminal as Caucasian is the Police, Detecting and Removing Multi-Class Bias in Word Embeddings. And this paper was presented at NAACL in 2019 by Thomas Manzini, Alan W. Black, Yao Chang Lim, and Yulia Svetkov. So let's talk about first the societal problem um, that this paper seeks to address. So first, um, social bias includes negative stereotypes, which are harmful to certain groups and can justify the denial of certain opportunities for those groups. And even so-called positive stereotypes can be harmful. Social bias in machine learning can cause harm, and that harm can actually extend to the real-world environments for reasons I've previously mentioned. In the machine learning pipeline, bias can be present from the training data stage, the model stage, all the way to the developer stage. This research problem is challenging because it aims to target more real-world demographics and considers the intersection of different classes, which is not trivial using current prevalent natural language processing methods so far. So now let's try to address, uh, we'll dive deeper into the technical shortcomings they wish to present a solution for in this paper, which is the bias in word embeddings. So word embeddings are vector representations of words that encode their relationships with other words in the data set. So basically words that appear close together in text would appear close together in the vector embedding space. word to vec is a type of word embedding that can actually store semantic relationships, such as analogies like uh, man is to woman as king is to queen. And these images here kind of show that those relationships. So back to the core problem with word embeddings, the data that the embeddings are trained on contain human stereotypes, and those can further perpetuate and amplify negative stereotypes when those models are used. So here is an example of the different multi-class stereotypes that are present in word embeddings, which uh, this image was included in the research paper, such as man is to doctor, as woman is to nurse. So now let's talk about the proposed solution that the researchers have. So earlier we mentioned how bias appears in every stage of the machine learning pipeline. It's not so straightforward or feasible to just remove the bias at every single stage. In a perfect world, we would want the bias to be removed at the training data stage, the model stage, and the developer stage. So the researchers present the biasing, which is a way to remove those biases after the models have already been trained. So more formally put, they propose several things. The first is the bias uh, mechanism did a bias word embeddings in the multi-class settings, such as race and religion. And the second is they propose a methodology to ensure the efficacy and robustness of standard natural language processing tasks are maintained so they can preserve the benefits of the word embeddings. So now let's talk about kind of some background. So this paper is somewhat of an extension of a paper called Man is the Computer Programmer as Woman is the Homemaker, the Biasing Word Embeddings by Bulabowski et al. And in their works, they also identified the geometric bias that is present in word embeddings and how those can capture harmful stereotypes that are present in our data. They also described the method to remove those gender bias by using principal component analysis and then performing either hard debiasing or soft debiasing. In this paper that I'm currently analyzing, the authors take a similar approach for debiasing in the multi-class setting, but with some changes and generalizations. So let's talk about how they implement multi-class debiasing. Multi-class debiasing, they perform two steps. The first step is to identify the bias subspace for the multi-class setting, which is their core contribution. And then they apply a similar debiasing mechanism to the binary gender paper, by applying either hard debiasing or soft debiasing, and we'll go a bit more in depth into this methodology. So let's talk first about identifying the bias subspace. So to identify the bias subspace in the multi-class setting, they treat it as a generalization of prior works. And just because it's a multi, this just because multiple social classes are involved, that doesn't mean the points can't lie across hyperplanes. So they experimentally demonstrate that based on um, previous mechanisms, the biasing mechanisms and works, that it is possible to linearly separate multiple social classes based on the components of the word embeddings. So now let's talk deeper about the actual mechanism for identifying the bias subspace. So first, they define, they begin by defining sets of words that would fall under a certain category, such as a religious subspace, such as the words synagogue, mosque, and church, and they label the mean of that set. They then would take the difference from each point equal to the mean and perform principal component analysis on those differences to get a set of vectors. Then by taking the top K components of the elements in the set that were generated by performing PCA, this allows them to calculate a bias subspace as a hyperplane and define it as a specific subspace, in this case, the religious subspace. 
And they apply either hard to biasing or soft to biasing. So for hard to biasing, it is known as neutralizing and equalizing. And basically, they first take the vector and set the component of the vector that's equivalent to the bias to zero. So in this way, the bias components are equalized. Um, sorry, the bias components are removed from the words that should not contain any bias. And this is the neutralization step. So that's the words doctor or nurse. And then they do the equalization step by center, uh, they equalize the bias components by centering those bias word embeddings. And that means every neutral word, word should be equidistant uh, with respect to any, sorry, <laughs> any neutral word should be equidistant to any bias words with respect to the bias subspace. And they can either also perform to, they can also choose to perform soft biasing. And I don't know too much about this one. I didn't fully understand it, but I know that it's a projection of the embedding matrix that preserves the inner products between bias and debiased embeddings. And also while minimizing the projection onto the bias subspace of embeddings that should be neutral. So now after they, uh, at this stage, after performing either hard debiasing or soft debiasing, um, the solution should be complete and bias should be decreased. So we'll talk about evaluation, how they really evaluate that. So they verify two questions. The first is, does a debiasing mechanism work and actually decrease bias? And the second is, does it maintain the efficacy of standard natural language processing tasks, as were the core contributions that they propose in their paper? So let's first talk about the data they use to determine success, and then we'll move on to the results. For evaluating the decrease of the bias as a result of the debiasing mechanism, they use a collection of Reddit posts and comments from native and non-native English speakers. They determine the uh, language of the user by looking at user flares and also the subreddit names like r slash us or r slash uk. They identify the social bias data as a compilation of lexicons from previous research studies and works, and then they define the gender bias data lexicon, religious bias data, racial bias data. For evaluating the efficacy of the NLP tasks, they use tasks like named entity, rec entity recognition, part of speech tagging, and part of speech chunking to ensure that their debiasing procedure has not destroyed the utility of the word embeddings. Now let's move on to the results. The first is, is the bias actually decreased? So they performed the proposed biasing procedure on the data set, and then they then calculate the mean average cosine score and the p-values to measure the effects of the biasing. And what they observed is that the biasing procedure categorically moves the mean average cosine score to one, which indicates an increase in the cosine distance, and then they observe from their data table that the p-values showed statistically significant changes. So overall, they demonstrated that their multi-class uh, debiasing mechanism does in fact decrease bias. To verify that standard NLP tasks performance are maintained, um, they saw that the debiasing can either help or actually harm the performance. For POS tagging, there was almost always a decrease in the performance. But for named entity recognition and POS chunking, there's a consistent increase and they concluded that the varying results were due to these models having learned to depend on the bias subspaces in different ways. A lot of their data also falls in line with the success data generated in the binary gender debiasing uh, mechanism. So overall, they concluded that the data supports the preservation of semantic utility in the multi-class setting. So that's all what this paper is about. The next is just Q&A and some questions uh, that I proposed. Uh, the first is, can this debiasing technique be applied to other languages in the future? The second is, is there a way to employ the debiasing mechanism at the training stage and other stages of the machine learning pipeline, and if that's a future consideration? And the third is, um, how do they decide whether to either apply hard debiasing or soft debiasing, and what factors are in consideration when deciding which one to use? Is it due to accuracy, or do they want to preserve certain, certain data? And that's the end. Overall, I really enjoyed this paper. It was very well written, manageable to, manageable to digest. Um, they tackled a very interesting problem and uh, definitely worth researching. And then it made me think more about the societal impacts of technology like, on the world, and especially with regards to more social issues. Um, so overall, um, I guess to give a better conclusion, they, we learned a lot of things. They showed the word embeddings that contain multi-class biases, and they presented a metric for evaluating the biasing procedures of word embeddings. And they also created a way to remove multi-class bias by generalizing existing mechanisms. 
Lastly, they also validated that it preserves the utility of embeddings for standard natural language processing tasks. So that's the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. Thank you.